What is up, everyone, and welcome back to the New Japan Takeover, where I am the host, Miss Y2 Garcia, and join with me again. You don't see him, but he is here. My lovely potato from Ireland is back. Daniel's here, but he's only here, like, vocally, not visually. Um, but yeah, Daniel, welcome back. And he has this bullshit picture up to rub it in my face that Jay attacked Hangman last night, uh, as of the day we're recording this. Daniel, welcome back, and how dare you. Hello, folks. My camera is not working for the foreseeable future, so please enjoy this beautiful picture from last night's Dynamite. I'm, um, I'll, I'll, I'll let, just to, just so they can see the picture, I'll leave it. But I'm gonna like again when I edit this, it's gonna be it's gonna change. It's gonna change throughout, and I'll make I'll be nice, but I won't be that nice to you. <laughs> so, but yeah, how you been, Daniel? Well, been I look forward to seeing. Yeah, been good. Looking forward to. Yeah. To recapping Dominion and such. It was good pay per view, despite some unfortunate circumstances. But I guess that's something I got to look forward to. I don't have to see you. I guess other than this fucking picture flaunting J shit. You know, like where's my ton of picture? I should have hung it up right there on my box wall. Oh well, I'll show it afterwards. But anyways, I got the jacket, so you know I'm still repping, still repping my guy. So we're just going to jump right in. Um, as you guys know, we're just going to go through each match. We're going to give our thoughts. We're going to give it a star rating. And then at the end of it all, we're just going to give our final thoughts overall. And we're going to give a wrestler of the night and a match of the night. So just, you know, just a little, I guess, just to let you know what exactly how this works. So opening match, we had the United Empire, Empire excuse me, with TJP, Aaron Hinare, and Francesco Akira versus Hi Hiroyoshi Tenzan, Master Wato, and Raisuke Taguchi. Daniel, thoughts on this opening match? Okay, I'm just going to say this now. Mm -hmm. The whole Team 69 thing with Wato and... Oh, yeah. I, yeah, just go ahead and say it. Go ahead and say it. They're trying to achieve something with it. I, I don't know what it is. But they're it's, trying to achieve it's, something. It's very, it's very confusing, if you will. It's like they're trying, but they're not really getting anywhere. Does that, like, that's yeah. Like, but um, I don't know. I, I, I see where you're coming from, and I was just like, what the, like when I first was starting to catch up, and they started doing it, I was like, what the hell's going on? Because ever since I started college, I haven't been able to keep with, keep up with New Japan like live. I usually watch like either the morning after when I get back from class or a couple days after, because depending on how busy my day is. So when I first started seeing it, I was like, what is happening? <laughs> but um, all in all, I thought it was a pretty good opener. I mean, I know some people really like openers to be like the best ever, but I mean, it's, I think it's a good little segue into the show, but I want your thoughts also on the match, not just the wrestling. Yeah, it was a, it was a good opener. I really like it. Uh... TGP, I think he could go far in like the junior heavyweight division. Mm -hmm. Same yeah. with the other two, I think they could do good things as well, but maybe not yet because uh, Akira just debuted there recently, didn't he? Yeah. So yeah, so give him a bit of time first, and then you could do. But even then, whatever, I can, whatever. I can... I think um, TJP could be a really good, you know, excuse me, junior heavyweight champion. I think he can, you know, he should, was he in the best of the super juniors? I. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, think so. I think he should win, though. I know Hiromu Takahashi's been completely taken over the best of the super juniors at this point. But I think TJP could really be, like, a good, like, face of the junior heavyweight division. And that being said, I would love to see, because I know Leo Rush at some point is going to come back, and he said he's going to put the whole junior heavyweight division on notice. I would love to see those two collide, especially for, like, the title. But um, back to the match. Um, United Empire took the win in this match. And, Daniel, what star rating would you give it out of one to five? Uh, 3.5. I gave it three. Just, again, it was, a, it was an opening match, and – um, I was okay. I'm not gonna lie. I was only like really half paying attention because I was a little nervous and I was picking at my nails and I had to tell myself to stop doing that. So I really like couldn't watch it to its full, like give it my undivided attention because I was nervous for what was to come. And then I just had to calm myself down. I was like, all right, just like enjoy the pay per view. It's cool. It's fine. So that's why I gave it three stars. I'm pretty sure it was probably a little bit better than that. But again, I wasn't paying that much attention, being honest. So 
Next match, we have another tag team match. We have LIJ um, members Bushi, Hiromu Takahashi, and Tatsuya Naito taking Bullet Club members Ace Austin, El Fantasmo, and Taiji Ishimori. Daniel, thoughts on this match? This was great. I love the dynamic between LIJ and, and Bullet Club. Uh, Ishimori and Ace Austin, I think, could go far as a junior tag team. However, they could still do great things as singles junior yeah. as well. I think they and, could. Oh, sorry. To go and finish. No, it's okay. And Naito and Takahashi as well teaming up. Like, whenever they announce that there's a tag match and it's Naito and Takahashi, you just know it's going to be a good oh. time because. Yeah, for sure. I get you. And I absolutely agree. Um, first of all, I think just one thought about, you know, this match. Um, Ace Austin, I think, is a really good addition to Bullet Club. I think he fits right in. I think, you know, this was something that he probably needed. I I didn't watch much of him on Impact, but I have a friend who's, like, obsessed with him in a good way, not, like, trying to throw shade. But um, – and I've seen mostly of what he has to offer from – through her – and um, I thought he was cool, good. I thought he was cool. And then seeing him in Bullet Club, I'm just like, oh, my God, this guy's awesome. So I think he fits right in. Um, I think he's kind of holding the little, I guess, I guess what little ties Impact and AEW might or could still have. But, again, I don't know. I think it's the big what-if game or what could be. But I also think that, like, you know, like, I hate to bring them up, but I guess it's a good example. Kind of like House of Torture. They have, like, their – well, when they were in Bullet Club, they had, like, their own little, I guess, faction, if you will. Like, a little faction inside the faction. I think these three could be kind of like that, you know, where you – and I think, like you said, Ace Austin and Taiji Shimori would be a great tag team. And I think El Fantasmo needs to go off and be, like, a badass singles wrestler. Like, give him some gold. Give him some singles gold. Like, I would like to see him, you know, win – the United States Championship at some point, you know? Like, give him something. I think if it was still there, El Fantasma would have been perfect for the Intercontinental. This is why I want that title back. Like, Koto, I love you, but yeah. fuck, why'd you do that to us? Like, you know how many more opportunities yeah. and how many more title matches we could have for, you know? Or, like, you know what? Since, since the Intercontinental title's not here, like, God damn it, Koto. But, look... You got the history. Go. I hate to say it, but go take it from Tamatanga. Get the Never Open Way title. Like, give them something. You know, they have the history. They could build something from that. You know, why not? Like, I wouldn't be mad at it. So, Bullet Club takes the win. I kind of thought so. You know, I think it was like Ace Austin's. Like, it is Ace Austin's first pay per view with you know, Bullet Club yeah. and in New Japan. And of course, I don't think they would make him lose his first match. So I kind of expected this. So Bullet Club takes the win. Daniel, what star rating would you give this match? Four. Four? Yeah, I gave it a four also. It was a really good match. Again, I think Ace Austin, like I said, fits right in with the Bullet Club. He's got good chemistry with them. And again, I think Ace Austin, El Fantasma, and Taiji Shimura could be like their own little trio, like on the side while they're still in Bullet Club. So good yeah. match. Good match. I think that one probably should have been the opener because, you know, if you want to start off with a bang, that one would probably probably would have been your best bet. But I here's, a, here's a random team name I'm going to throw out for the three of those guys. What? Because you have the Bullet Club with the Bone Soldier and then Ace Austin, so call them the Ace of Bones. Dude, go tweet that to Ace or something or DM it to him. Just say Ace of Bones. Thank me later. Yeah. There you go. Um, okay, so the third match, which honestly, why the hell is this on pay-per-view? We had Doc Gallows versus Daniel's all-time favorite, Toru Yanu. Daniel, I would love to hear your thoughts on this match. Six-star classic. <laughs> Ken Okada, who? <laughs> Yano and Gallows is where it's at. Yeah. Yeah, to to repeat your your statement there, why was this on a pay per view? Especially like a pay per view like this, it wasn't like you know like Summer Struggle where you have multiple nights, right? Yeah, Summer Struggle yeah. they had like different like they had like five or six different nights of Summer Struggle. Like it was like a whole event, like a whole summer event. They could have done it there, like on an event like that, not like a big pay per view like Dominion. No, this was Dominion. This is arguably their second biggest show of the year. I would, I would, on... I would say it is after Wrestle Kingdom. Yeah, Wrestle. I would say it's Wrestle Kingdom. Dominion. Either Dontaku or or 
Dominion. I think but Kenny this is and not sorry, a I'm match. Just... Like this is a strong match. Yeah. At best. Yeah. And I was just gonna say that I think Kenny and Okada really raised the stakes for Dominion and gave it such a good rep. I think Dominion would be a bigger pay per view than Don Taco. But that's just me. But yeah, yeah, I agree. This is this was again. This was this is like a sh- the shit you see on AW Dark, which I don't watch. But like the, the, these weird, random ass, no no good reason matches. <laughs> Why was this on paper? I, I that's all I asked. I was like, why am I watching this right now on this pay per view? Like, I don't mind random ass matches between people, but it's like neither of them are were ever going to put on a good match. No, yeah, there was no. <laughs> that's all I could say. Like, no, it was, and of course it was quick. It was short. I probably should have timed it, but it was less than ten minutes. I know that for sure. I think entrances were longer than the actual match. Um, Tariano's. Toriano's intro- ring introduction was longer than the entire show. <laughs> it's because he's got that Undertaker long entrance where he has this, you know, he has, he's a salesman. He's got to sell his stuff. He's got to sell his shirt. He's got to sell his DVD, which I still want to get. Look, Katie wants to start this thing on our show where we start reacting to certain things in wrestling because apparently m- me reacting to MJF's pipe bomb has like almost 4,000 views on YouTube. I'm like, good Lord. Okay was not expecting yeah, I saw that. that. Yeah, I was like, what the fuck? But anyway, so she wants to do more of that. Again, I should have you and Brooke on and we can react to whatever's on Toriano's DVD. Like, I will pay the exchange rate from US dollars to yen. I will pay for the international shipping and I'll bring it here and I'll I'll get the DVD. Like, I want to know what's on that DVD. <laughs> it's, it's like, okay, I, I know you don't like the... I know, I know you don't like the guy, but are you at least a little bit curious to see what the hell he's trying to sell us with that DVD? I think from what I've seen, because I did a little bit of research, I think it's a cooking thing. A cooking? Oh, I think we, ta- with, we talked about this. I think on the Q&A on our second episode. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, oh, yeah, and we said we were going to follow his recipes. We're going to do, like, cook with me, Toriano's cook. Yeah, that's what we should do one day. I should fly over there, and me, you, and Brooke should do a whole cooking video, <laughs> just copying the recipes from... Yeah, yeah there we go. That we should, that, there we, dude, boom, we would blow up on YouTube. But, yeah, yeah. back to this dismal AEW dark match. Um, what would you <laughs> give it? How, how many stars would you give this match? Two. And that's that's right. being generous. I, know, and that's that. being generous. I was. I said that too. I was like two, and I'm just. I'm being kind here. I, I usually kind of like to put like some notes, like as to like something I want to point out or something I wanted to say. But I have. I don't have anything written here. Just why is this on pay per view? That's all. I, that's all my mind was going through the whole time I was watching this. No reason why this match should be on a pay-per-view. Imagine if, like, AEW had something like this on their pay-per-view. They would get torn to shreds. But this just goes to show that not many yeah. people watch New Japan, because, of course, I was we were probably the only ones, like, losing our damn minds over this match being on a pay-per-view. So we're going to skip over. That match did not exist. The real third match of the night, aka okay, the fourth match, was the never open weight six man tag title match? We had House, the champions House of Torture, Evil Show, and Yujiro Takahashi versus Suzuki Gun, which is Zack Saber Jr., Yoshi, Yoshi Nubu Kanemaru, and El Desperado. Um, Daniel, thoughts on this match? I have thoughts outside of the match, but I want to hear your thoughts first. Yeah, it was solid. Um, Saber Jr. and Desperado are great as, as a team. For sure. I thought it was a pretty good match too. Um, I was gonna say I was like, who's the winner? I just I wrote it down because um, House of Torture retained. Um, I kind of expected that because you know I think they're just trying to keep keep them with the gold because you know they're I don't know. I just kind of expected it, um, especially with Show there. You know he's the newest member, so I thought you know they're probably gonna leave the gold with them for a bit. Um, so I just wanted to point something out, and that is. As of recording this last night, have you watched Dynamite, Daniel? Yes, I have. Okay, just making. I guess you saw my story, so you know all the fucking spoilers. But um, so yesterday on Dynamite, as of recording this last night, Dynamite was on, and as and um during a segment, um, or I guess during Tana versus Mox, which we'll get more into when we get to Tana's match, um. El Desperado showed up to attack, you know, Tana and Mox, because apparently he's 
the newest member of the Jericho Appreciation Society? Like, did I think Jericho messed up there, or is he actually a new member? Because I know Ty, Ty and Sammy are the new members, but he, the way Jericho worded it, he kind of made it seem like El Des, he kind of, it kind of sounded like he said El Desperado was in the Jericho Appreciation Society also, which I don't think is the case, because again, he's got his own faction, but I think he's just going to team up with them, right, at Forbidden Door. That part was just so confusing, because I think that part was kind of a little all over the place on Dynamite, but El Desperado was there, but Zack Sabre Jr. wasn't there, or Yoshinobu Kanemaru, and Lance Archer was also, but I was just kind of like confused. So could you make it make sense, Daniel, or? Yeah, I just got that Sammy and Tay joined, but he was just being helped by Suzuki Gun to. Okay, because again, maybe I just need to go back and watch. Maybe I was just still like, freaking, like, what's the word? In shock that Tunnel was there and he was like, you know, face to face with Mox. I loved every moment of that, but again, we'll get into that later. Um, but I was just like, whoa, like, I was just, I had to take a step back. I was like, wait, what the hell? I'm like, what is this guy saying? I was like, Jericho, hold up. I love you, but shit, what are you saying? I was like, are you trying to tell me that you trying to tell me that um like El Desperado, only one member of Suzuki Zone is in the Jericho Appreciation Society? But yeah, I think you're right. I think it's just Ty and Sammy. But it was just weird. But I just wanted to point that out. El Desperado has officially made his AW debut. And, you know, just shortly after, you know, his well, he didn't win at Dominion, but yeah, just shortly after. But um back to the match, Daniel. Um, how many stars would you give this match? Uh, 3.8. 3.8. I gave it 3.5. I was not that Yeah, not that was very specific, but it was yeah. solid, but it wasn't, like, the amazing. Best. Yeah, that's why I gave it 3.5. Because sometimes I just want to give matches that are solid 4, but I'm thinking, like, that's, like, one star away from being 5. And, you know, 5's got to be, like, damn near perfect. Or if not yeah, perfect. So, like, there, so. I'll just give it 3.5. Okay. Um... Okay, so the next match, which was the fifth match of the night, we had the IWGP heavyweight tag titles on the line. Um, the champions of Bad Luck Fale and Chase Owens took on Jeff Cobb and the Great O'Con of the United Empire. Daniel, thoughts on this match? I was genuinely not sure who was going to win this because that could have went either way. Because mm-hmm. the Bullet Club, Fale and Chase could have retained and that would have made sense and then Cobb and Khan going into Forbidden Door as tag champs against probably Rapungi, Rapungi Vice so it could have went either way but yeah sense going into Forbidden Door yeah um, so I thought that Chase and Fale were going to retain but because they didn't it kind of gave me some false hope over what was over, over the result in the main event, because I mentioned this in the um, Capital Collision um, recap that I did, that because almost all gold is Bullet Club, it gave me like a sense of instability that Jay was going to walk out of Dominion with the championship. And then I was like, okay, since Chase and Bad Luck Fale lost, that means that not all Bullet Club, like, you know, there's less gold with the Bullet Club. So by by that definition, maybe, you know, things will be different. But then another match happens, which we'll get into, and then that kind of made me lose that hope. But, yeah, I thought it was a good match. Again, I thought it was a match that um, – where you didn't know who was going to win, which I like that. Sometimes I like that, where you don't know who's going to win because then you, you're really on the edge of your seat. You want to know, you you know, you, you get to watch the match – I think watching matches not knowing who's going to win is a little bit better because it gives gives you more, like, excitement, if you will. It makes you look forward to, you know, actually watching. Um, that being said, though, since Chase and Folly are no longer the champions, I said this on Chase Owens' Twitch stream, and he was just like, hmm, like, you know, it could happen. I said, would we see, could we see Chase and Folly versus the Young Bucks? And I'm like, well. Maybe now we can because the Bucks are now the two-time AW Tag Champs and Chase and Fale just lost the IWGP Heavyweight title. So maybe they're the first challengers for the Bucks titles at Forbidden Door. Who knows? But yeah, I just wanted to point out. Yeah, that'd be cool. 
Yeah, that would be cool. But yeah, um, thought it was a solid match. Um, I kind of also, maybe there was a part of me kind of thought maybe Great Okan and Jeff Cobb would win. Because again, like I said, Forbidden Doors coming up. It's the next, it's like, you know, at the time the pay-per-view happened, like 12 days away, 20 days away. I don't know. It was like at least two weeks away. So I knew they needed to have some sort of build-up. And I think because they've at least showed up to AEW that maybe it would be, it would make a little more sense for them to win. But yeah, I thought it was a good match. Um, what? How many stars did you give it? Three point five. Three point five. I gave it three point five also. And something I wanted to know was after the match, um, little Rocky Romero tried to attack United Empire because they cost um, Rapungi Vice the Ring of Honor Championships um, on Dynamite against FTR. So Rocky Romero was out to get revenge, but they. He was no match because, you know, it's two on one. And so now I'm thinking kind of like how Daniel said, we might be getting um, United Empire versus Rapungi Vice for the IWGP heavyweight tag titles. And honestly, I think this might be the only title change at the pay-per-view. Well, I guess uh, technically the AW championship will change hands, but it's like an interim champion. But I think other than that, like, I think this will be the only match where a title changes hands. Because I don't think, there's no, I'm sorry, but there's no way Orange Cassidy's beating Osprey for the title. There's no way, and I think that's the only other title. I think that's the only other title on the line. Again, we still don't know the status of Jay White or with the, with the I fucking spoiled it, oh well. With the IWGP um, heavyweight title, world heavyweight title. We still don't know the status of that. So as far as I know, only, that's probably the only title change that might happen at Forbidden Door. But I mean, hey, I wouldn't be mad at it. Um, any other final thoughts on this match, Daniel? I think uh, Forbidden Door definitely will be a Bullet Club team show because yeah. you have Jay coming out, Adam Cole and everything. So shit's going to go down there with yeah. within the Bullet Club and the Elite. Probably, that's probably what we'll see also. We'll probably get like a five on five match or some something something like that but who knows we'll have to wait and see um so after this match they announced the g1 that's finally coming back to the summertime i believe it's in august yeah it's an it starts in august right or does it end in august i thought july did it not what or did it, say august? it starts in july and it ends in august that's that's what i meant <laughs> So let me say, I knew I saw something about August, but I think that's when it that's when the finals are. So they released all the participants for the um, G1, but of course because it's in Japanese, some of it I couldn't get. Like apparently there's going to be four blocks of seven instead of um, a an A and a B block. You know they usually just do two blocks. Apparently, based on what I've heard. Again, because there was in Japanese, which I do not speak or understand. There's going to apparently be four blocks of seven, which means there's 28 total participants all together. Which, holy shit, that's a lot. But anyway, so we have the following participants in the G1 this year. We have Kazuchika Okada, Hiroshi Tanahashi, Tetsuya Naito, Hiroki Goto, Tamatanga, Shingo Takagi, Chase Owens, Bad Luck Folly, Jiro Takahashi, Evil, Tom Lawler, Juice Robinson, Jonah, Yoshihashi, Toruyano, Tomohiro Ishii, Jeff Cobb, Great Okan, Aaron Hanare, Will Ospreay, Sanada, Jay White, Kenta, ELP, or El Fantasmo, Taichi, Zack Sabre Jr., Lance Archer, and David Finley. Those are the participants for the G1. Daniel, just really quick, any predictions of who you think is going to win this year? No idea who's going to win. But like, I'd who do you like want to, to win? Who I'd want to win out of all of those, probably Taiji. I think he deserves a G1. That, I can see it. Okay, so again, I don't know who the fuck's going to win, but I know who the fuck's not going to win. Um, <laughs> because, you know, he won the title. But anyways... Um, that being said, I I don't again I don't know who the hell's gonna win. They could go any way with this. This is a big ass freaking card, or I guess yeah, pool bracket, whatever you want, however you want to freaking name it. But I think, or I I want not think, it should be the one who no offense to Okada who should have gone to the finals. Um, Zack Saber Jr. I think it should have been him. Or Tomohiro Ishii. I keep saying this, justice for Ishii. Like, 
give him a title. Give him a G1 win. He fucking deserves it. He is a freaking, he's a champion and he freaking looks like one and he performs like one. Give Ishii something. So, big sigh. That being said, we're going to move on to the the All Atlantic now. That is true. The All Atlantic Championship, Ishii is in that tournament. So, all I'm asking, please just give me Miro versus Ishii. Imagine how fucking awesome that match would be. They're pretty much the same build. And, you know, imagine those two clashing for, like, a history-making match like that. Like, come on now. Pretty please. Did you, obviously, I don't think you got the, the thing there. What thing? The match, it's, it's a fatal four-way at Forbidden Door. Oh, it, oh shit. Me, oh, it is a fatal four Yeah. Oh, already in it. It, so it is. A... Pack, Miro, not oh, okay. Panda, and thing. So if Ishii wins his qualifying match, then he's there. Well, okay. At some point, I still want to see Ishii versus Miro. I guess I missed that part. The way they explained it was very confusing to be in my defense but um because even like katie on our and weekly that's where miro should go to japan yeah that is true that is very true um they're not really well, i guess he just returned so not exactly aw's fault but um they really haven't done much with him since he lost the title but i guess it's because he's been hurt so i guess i can't give him too much crap but i'm just saying if you want to do something with them let him go to japan let him tear it up there but, um, okay, so to the sixth match, we had the interim AEW Championship qualifying match. Um, Hiroki Goto of Chaos taking the ace. Where is it? It's Tanahashi, Hiroshi Tanahashi, um, where the winner gets to go face John Moxley at Forbidden Door sometime in the near future. I don't know exactly how many weeks it is. Sometime this month. For to become the interim AEW champion while CM Punk is out with injury. Daniel, thoughts on this match? And I'm going to change the ton of picture when I'm editing this. I'm going to change that fucking picture. But thoughts on the match? It was, it was a great match, but I think it kind of the hype for us suffered a little bit because we kind of knew who was going to win already before you went I, into it. So I completely it wasn't understand. really that like. It was great. I was able to get behind it and enjoy it, but I wasn't able to kind of be on the edge of my seat of any moment would be it could go either way because we kind of knew it was definitely going to be Mox Tana forbidden. Yeah. Um, well, I guess he had a match anyway, but I was going to say, I was going to say maybe like Osprey, but um, he had a match. I forget, I forget. Like he had a match on the card, which is actually, I believe, the next match. No, it's not. But anyways, um, I think, yeah, if they would have made the match with someone who is a little more, like, predictable to win, then, yeah, I think it would have been, like, holy shit. Like, yeah, it would have been more, like, hyped. I would have been more hyped for it. But I guess, you know, me being a Tanahashi fan and knowing he's going to win, I guess I, I, it felt a little relieving that I don't have to worry. Like, oh, shit, he's probably going to lose. So... I still thought it was a really good match overall. And there were some close calls. Like, there were some times where I thought, oh, shit, are they really, like, they maybe not, oh, shit, they're really going to have time to lose. But there were some close calls, if you will. Like, there were some two counts that got a little too close for comfort. But, yeah, we all, we kind of knew, especially because John Moxley was on the other side waiting for Tana. So, we're like, dude, it's going to happen. It's got to, you know. I, the, when they first said that it was John Moxley versus whoever they are going to choose from New Japan, we all knew it was going to be Tana, but I'm not mad at it, and I'm not mad at the match. It was so fucking awesome. But how many stars would you give this match, Daniel? I'll give a four. Four? Okay, I'm biased. I gave it a 4.5 because I still thought it was a really good match. And again, I like Tanahashi. Um, guys could still hang. Um, I really wish that it would be like, I guess... I don't know. I guess if I if I would have known that it was not going to be for the AW interim championship or whatever you want to fucking call it, I think it would be a little more likely that the match could go either way. But now because it is for a title that's for AW, obviously John Moxley is going to which I'm not mad at. I like John Moxley. Don't get me wrong, but like it's gonna it's pretty obvious. Kind of like back to what you said about the hype. I'm still hyped, and I know the match is going to be good. But we all know who's going to win. So it kind of like kind of like. Sorry, could do a swerve and Tana will win and stay in the states for a bit. Dude, if that happens, I will lose my fucking mind. Like, holy shit. Um, 
But I don't know. I don't know. Again, maybe they'll swerve us. I don't know. They'll probably. I don't. I don't know. Maybe this. Maybe this match will be historic for many different reasons. Maybe we'll get some massive plot twists. Like maybe Orange Cassidy will walk out with the United States Championship. Who knows? Um, fuck. Okay. But the next match, we, which is the seventh match of the night, we had um, the King of Pro Wrestling title match. Um, it was a ten minute match. It was a weird concept, but I liked it. I honestly personally liked it. It was a 10-minute match, so they had a 10-minute timer that was going down, and current championship holder, Chingo Takagi of LIJ, took on Taichi, and basically what they did was they would pin each other to the mat, and for every count, they would get, that's how many, I guess, they would ca- they would count the counts, you know, like for how many times they were able to count the shoulders being on the mat. Does that make any sense? Like, if Shingo Takagi pinned Taichi and they did a two count, they would have two on Takagi's board. And by the end of the 10 minutes, whoever had the most counts on their opponent would win. So, I hope it's, I know there's probably an easier way to explain that, but I did my best. (laughs) Daniel, thoughts on the match? Really taking a proper direction now with the King of Pro Wrestling thing. Yes. Cause it was just, it was so bad there. With your like, favorite? Or, yeah. But even when it wasn't on him, like when, Ch- when was it Chase that got it? Uh, Chase and even Suzuki. Like, I'm not saying that Suzuki's a bad wrestler, but they just didn't take it in any sort of direction when Suzuki had it. Yeah. And then when Shingo got it and said, oh, I'm going to, you know, change the direction and He's doing such do a great this. job. He's doing a great job. It feels more important. It's a it's a ridiculous concept, but it's it's fun. We have two like we have a full card of proper serious matches. So why not have one that's just a kind of a, a fun breather? Too. Yeah, and I know it's a, I guess it's not the most like I guess respected, if you will, kind of match. You know, I'm pretty sure people are like, what the hell is this? I liked it though. I thought it was again, it's something different, and it kind of like you know. I don't know. I just, I personally liked it. I thought it was, it was unique. And I thought, you know, it was a good way to like defend the title. And it kind of made me thinking this is probably, cause it's not really a championship, but that's what they call it. The conventional championship, the King of Pro Wrestling, King of Pro Wrestling conventional championship. That's what they call it, but it's a trophy. But anyways, I think that that trophy could be those unique, different kind of ridiculous matches, if you will. Maybe you have those different stipulated matches for that title specifically, like, and try and do something creative. I think that's probably the most creative direction you could take with it. And I think Shingo Takagi has done an amazing job, basically bringing that shit back to life, okay? Because, like, I, like, y'all know it's kind of like, I'm kind of on the fence with him right now, but when he had it, it was just a prop, if you will. He would just carry it with him. It's nothing more than, like, when Ace Austin walks out with his cane, you know? Or... Like, that's, it was just a prop that he would hold. It really had no value, in my opinion, when Toriyano had it. And they didn't really elevate the value when Minoru Suzuki had it or Chase Owens. So I really think that Shingo Takagi is taking this, you know, trophy and really bringing something to the table with it. And I really like that. I think he's yeah, probably... Yeah, see a new, a new direction. Going yeah, and a better direction, if you will. So and I, I nothing against Tai Chi. I didn't think I didn't think he like deserved to lose or that he shouldn't have won. But I just have enjoyed the way Shingo Takagi has taken this trophy and elevated the value of it. I want to see more. I want to see what else he's gonna come up with. I want to see more what he can do with it. So don't take it off him just yet. I think he needs to hold it for a really long time because he's really doing something that what seems to be no one else could do with it. Um, yeah, he's doing. Yeah. Um, okay, so how many stars would you give this match? Uh, three, three point five. Three in, point five. In so I give it three point seven five because again, I just personally liked it, and again, it was mostly for Shingo, who actually yeah, I forgot to mention he won the match. Um, Shingo Takagi won the match, um, and he again, I just it's mostly for the I guess it, I would give it like a three, but the extra star. It, the start like the extra 1.5 stars 
is mostly for Shingo because again, he's really taken this and done something good with it. Something that, like I said, no other wrestler who's had it has been able to do. And I'm really happy that he's able to do that. It just goes to show how awesome he is as a wrestler. Like, I think he was kind of, he, not even kind of, he was totally slept on before he won the IWGP World Heavyweight title. Like, he was the champ for a reason. He held it as long as he did for a reason. And now we're just seeing more of what he has to offer, even without a title belt. You know, I guess it's still a title, but it's not a belt. But, yeah. So, next match, we have the eighth match which is the IWGP Never Open Weight Championship match. We had Tama Tonga of Girls of Destiny, who is the, who, the current champion, taking on Carl Anderson of the Good Brothers slash Bullet Club. Daniel, thoughts on this match? I don't think I'm the only one when I say that I strongly dislike the Good Brothers. Oh, no, I don't like them either. They're just in no, like, they're just, they're not, good they're just not good um i think i'm oh, sorry i was just gonna say i think the good brothers are like i don't want to say want to be ftr but i feel like they're trying to be like the technical wrestlers like that but like it's not working you know like i think ftr like is kind of like what they're trying to be like i could be wrong though but i just i don't see the hype in them like honestly if it weren't for them in bullet club they probably like I would hate to say it, have no relevancy, you know, like they're, I don't think they could hold their own, you know, without they, Bullet Club. Like they, even, they even would be irrelevant with their Bullet Club. And even like, I hate to say it, but even in the Fed, even the WWE, like think about how relevant they were when they were with AJ and then how irrelevant they were without AJ. And this is not just booking, okay? Because let me tell you, if you're a good tag team, you can put on some badass performances. You don't need anyone else. Or even like, doesn't matter how bad your booking is. If you can put on a match, then, you know, you can try to make the best of a bad situation. But I feel like, you know, in WWE, they needed AJ. In Impact, they needed Jay. And now in New Japan, they still need Jay. But now they have the rest of Bullet Club to, you know, be with, if you will. Um, yeah, I just, uh, I don't see the hype. If there, First of all, I don't know if there is any hype. Maybe just because they are in Bullet Club, that's where their hype comes from. And that's why you know, the fake fans and shit like to like mark out over them. But I'm just like, dude, I don't see it. Like I, I have never really liked them. I was just like, okay, they're just there. And I hate to say it, but I, um, I really have enjoyed their time away from being the elite. Like I'm like, yes, just stay away from the box, please. They have made being the elite so hard to watch when they were there. I'm like, I just want to see the box. Okay. Like I want to see the bucks doing the thing. I want to see what's going on, and I don't want you guys making all these dick jokes and stuff and talking about Sour Boy. Like, stop. Like, okay? Like, I just want to watch the Bucks. I don't need you guys there. They're just, they're so cringy, and they're, they try so hard to be funny, and it's just, it never works. Yeah, exactly. And what what doesn't help them either is that they have z- almost zero in-ring ability. And they're also just not, like, they're meant to be just terrible people as well. Like, we know from Carl Anderson's Twitter that he's just... He's, he's, yeah, no. I I don't see where people have, like, again, it's probably just because, again, like I said, it's probably because they're in Bullet Club. But even then, like, Jay's in Bullet Club, and I don't fucking like him, but I still like Bullet Club. Like, you know, when... Carl Anderson was not one of the original four members of the Bullet Club. The Good Brothers would still be in WWE now. Probably, yeah. I hate to say it. I don't think they would be... If they were, if he was not one of the original four, he probably would not even ever be in Bullet Club. I don't think he would have been a good addition to... Just because he's maybe... Maybe just because he's the machine gun, but that's it. Like, for his fucking name, you know? Because, oh, Bullet Club, and then, oh, Machine Gun Carl Anderson. Like, that's it. But I even then, I don't... I'm not really convinced that he would. Like, he doesn't... No, if it, they, wasn't, for, if it right? wasn't for the attachment to Bullet Club, it would be... They'd either still be in the WWE or still be in the Indies. Yeah, and I hate to say... I keep saying that, but sometimes I don't hate to say it. That um, they don't bring anything to, like, Bullet Club's, like 
reputation, if you will. They don't. Like, at least Jay, he's the leader. And, you know, yet when the Bucks and Kenny were there, they had the elite, and they were just, like, the best that they could be. They were the best of their, like, divisions. So, I like, what did they bring to the table? Like, seriously, what and what do they bring to the table, the Good Brothers, to Bullet Club? Like, what, what sort of assets or value do they bring to Bullet Club? Like, could you name any? No. The gold brothers of our yeah, but anyways, um, despite that, despite us not liking the good brothers and how they bring absolutely no value to Bullet Club, uh, the match honestly exceeded my expectations. I thought this was gonna be a like a short, you know, quick match, you know, boring. Because not because of Tamatonga, but because of Carl Anderson. But uh, again, it exceeded my expectations. I was like, "Holy shit, this match was actually really good." It was. Um, it went longer than I thought, and it was. You know, it was one of those matches. Honestly, where I didn't know who was gonna win. I didn't know if Tama was gonna win. I didn't know if Carl was gonna win, and so I was, you know, pretty like on the edge of my seat, especially because there was a lot of close calls on both on both ends. So I'm thinking, like, what the? I was very shocked not only at the result but like at how good the match was i was like this was actually a pretty good match so what how many stars would you give it how many stars would you give this match that personally exceeded my expectations give it i give a four because it was good but it's just the wrong i think the wrong result and it does not give Tamatanga any help and it, it doesn't give Bullet Club any help like you said with the Cup Brothers. Yeah, so I guess I should have mentioned that Carl Anderson did win. He's the new Never Open Way champion. Um, I thought Tama's reign should have been a lot longer. Um, like, why give him this singles title? You know, if you're not just, if like, why, he was basically a filler champion for what? Like, for Carl Anderson, it's not like even one of the good wrestlers, not even a singles wrestler. I make make it make sense. So I don't know why they did this to him. Again, I would love to see what they do with it because I don't know if Carl Anderson will bring any value to the Never Open Win title. I think if anything, the Never the Never Open Win title is bringing value to Carl Anderson. But no, not at all. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's not kind of like how John Cena says it's not the man that makes the title. It's not the title that makes the man. It's the man that makes the title. This title is making Carl Anderson basically. That that like this title is making Carl Anderson. Carl Anderson giving him some relevancy, but even then, I still disagree with it. So the next match, the semi main event, the ninth match, whatever you want to call it, was for the IWGP US Championship that has been vacated for, I believe, the third time this year. Um, this title is cursed. I said it before. I even said it on Reddit and got like some upvotes on it. Um, if you guys want to get the United States Championship, the IWGP United States Championship, word of advice. Do not win it from Hiroshi Tanahashi. You will forever be cursed. Um, just a little backstory before I get into the match. Um, Kenta beat Hiroshi Tanahashi for the U.S. title and end up, ended up losing it to Tana at Wrestle Kingdom and, get it, and got injured for months. He was injured for months. Tana loses the title to Sonata. Sonata gets injured and has to relinquish the title due to injury. Tana wins the championship after Sonata had to vacate it. And then at Capital Collision defends it in a four-way where Juice Robinson wins it. Juice Robinson, <laughs> before Dominion, is forced to vacate the title, which apparently is for appendicitis. But I don't know if that's a work, only because um, Juice Robinson refused to give up the title. That being said... The title is, which I'm not going to say the winner just yet. The title, Juice Robinson still has the title. The winner of the match does not have the title. Juice Robinson still does. The championship was never given to the new champion. So this could be a work. This could be kind of like what Osprey did with the IWGP World Heavyweight title. We'll just have to wait and see. But yeah, basically, if you win the IWGP US title from Tana, good luck with life. You're cursed and you better like sleep with one eye open because you might, something might happen. But... So yeah, 
Juice Robinson, the former champ, was forced to vacate the title, which set up for Will Ospreay, um, who was supposed to actually be in the match that Tano won, where Tano won it the third time before he lost to Juice um, because he got COVID, I think. Will Ospreay just couldn't make it. Will Ospreay's just had a bad year, okay? He's had COVID, he's had injuries. He's just gone through it. Osprey couldn't compete for the title, so Ishii replaced him, I believe, if I remember correctly, and then Tano won. So Osprey does have reason to be in this match. And then Sonata, of course, he's a former champ. He had to relinquish. And I was personally rooting for Sonata, but unfortunately that did not happen. Um, Will Osprey walked out with the IWGP. Um, you, well, he didn't walk out with it, but he walked out as the champion. Again, Juice Robinson still has a title. But Daniel... Thoughts on this match and thoughts on being cursed by Tanahashi if you beat him for the U.S. title? Tanahausen. What? Tanahausen, yes. Tanahausen, like, dude, like, Dan Housen got nothing. No, nothing against Dan Housen, but he got nothing on Tana's curses, okay? Tana's curses are evil, man. They're, like, shit. Like, you are, you do not want to get cursed by Tana. You, like, bad, really bad things will happen. Yeah, Tanahausen, very, very ace, very evil. There you go, very ace. I need to, I need to make some. I need to make like a photo edit of that somehow. Like somehow, I need to make that like a little graphic, it, something. But I will show you. Yeah, this, this, this match was great. Osprey's great. Sonata's great. Either one could have won there, and I would have been happy because both of them deserve. Yeah. Good runs with the US title. Hopefully. The curse ends because here's a solution: just never put the U.S. title on Tanahashi again. <laughs> look, and that solves the problem. No, look. Okay, uh, on oh, fuck, man. Okay, here's the thing though. I need Tanahashi. Okay, I know he's he's cursed with that title, or he gives he curses people with that title. But I need one legit ass, not filler title run for that title with Tanahashi, okay? Like, Tanahashi's three reigns were filler reigns, and that pisses me off, okay? Like, he sh- there's, like, I wish he wouldn't have lost, but, like, I guess some things work out in really unique ways because I feel like if Tana retained in that four-way, we would probably be getting Tana and Mox for the U.S. title as opposed to the interim AEW championship. Or maybe we still would have gotten that, but who knows? But, yeah, Tana is evil which is very ironic because tana like is known to be the very like the sweetheart he's the the ultimate baby face he's the john cena of new japan let's be real he's the john cena of new japan he's never gonna be heel like let's be real he's never gonna be heel he's the sweetheart he's always the goody two shoes but dude don't let the goody two shoes vibes deceive you he will curse you when he has the chance and he's done so on three different occasions just be careful guys be careful Tana is dangerous for you. Tana's dangerous. See, I like dangerous guys. That's why I like Tana. He's dangerous, man. But yeah, back to the match. Really good match. That match was phenomenal. It was, again, and it was another match where I didn't know which way it would have gone. But it was also a match where I would not have been upset at whoever would have won. I was very impressed. Again, so many close calls. And honestly, like, don't, honestly, I said yesterday, don't sleep on Osprey. But don't sleep on either of them these two are absolutely incredible i hope that sonata can get a singles title soon take that never open way title off fucking carl anderson give it to sonata like something you know i know i said that um el phantasmo should get it but hey either one of them just get the title off carl anderson but even then it seems more likely that that sonata can do it than el phantasmo because el phantasmo and carl anderson are both in bullet club so yeah give sonata the never open was that old. He needs a nice long singles reign. He's fucking amazing in the ring. And these two had excellent chemistry. There was amazing spots. You know, it was just amazing overall. Um, with that being said, Daniel, how many stars would you give this match? 4.5. Or you gave it. Oh, oh, fuck. I know why. Um, so you get, I, oh, I didn't even need to explain. I already know why, and you'll probably explain it next. I gave it five stars, okay? Because let me tell you, that match, like, I had high expectations, but holy shit, like, I was pretty fucking tired by the time this match came around, because I didn't, I, it was, it started, the pay-per-view started at 11 p.m. my time, so I'm like, well, I'm not gonna go to sleep. I'm just gonna stay up. But I ended up 
this match like woke me up. It like caffeinated me in a weird way. It got me so hyped that I not only was able to stay up for the rest of the pay-per-view, I stayed up till four in the morning. I was, it was because of this match. It really woke me up and I was so invested in it. I was so amazed at what these two put on for, you know, the whole world to see. And I was, again, just chef's kiss, massive props to both of them. So yeah, that was, again, good match. But again, like I mentioned, Osprey never got the title. Juice still has it. So we're just going to have to see what happens with that. Okay. And now we get to the main event. Yeah, whatever. For the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship, we have Okada, the leader of Chaos, who is the champion, taking on Jay White, uh-huh, um, who is the leader of the Bullet Club, whatever. Um, Daniel, thoughts on the match? <laughs> I'm just glad that all of you will now have to breathe with the switchblade. <laughs> oh, I, I'd rather because it's still his era. It can't still That's be his era. It, I'm logging off now. Thank you. Bye bye. It, it cannot still be his era when it never was his era. Okay, his era, like if like he was around when Kenny was, you know, taking over or had taken over Japan, so it couldn't have been his era. Okay. No, I refuse to admit it. It was always his era. You just was, didn't know it was his era. It was never his era. It can never be his era when he was in Kenny Omega's shadow. Never. No. Um. Anyway, <laughs> um, other than that, other than I'm, I'm not breathing with shit. I'm gonna wear a gas mask or I'll die. Um, it doesn't matter. I'll stop breathing. It's cool. I'm asthmatic anyway. I suck at breathing. So there you go. I was never meant to breathe with him, but. What were your thoughts on the match, other than the result of the match? Damn. Yeah, it was a great match. Um, Okada and Jay, I don't think they've had one bad match. I know, I was like, damn it, um, it was good. <laughs> yeah, I don't think they've had one bad match. The one at Wrestle Kingdom, that only went about 14 minutes or something. Was that so was good. great. The G1, uh, no, it was a, a dodgy finish at the end. Jay cheated and whatever, but... That was good. That was uh, heel shit, though. I'll, I'll, I'll be it. I'll admit it. Was, it was heel shit. You know, that's how you... If you want to beat someone like Okada, you have the heel beat him, like, some sketchy way so you don't really hurt Okada. I, I get yeah. it. So I'll, I'll accept that, but still. The other G1 matches they've had after that, same thing. Um, but this match, I think we knew was going to be... The G1 that good. Jay never won. <laughs> Excuse me, the J-1s. No, not the J-1s. That sounds like my Matt and Nick's shoes, okay? That sounds like their shoes. So you know what? Oh, side note. Side note. I've seen your comment on Matt's post about his shoe just not putting back on his shoe. Yeah. Could that have been a little hint that they're leaving the Air Jordans aside because they're slowly turning face again? Oh, shit. Dude, the way you think, man. Imagine. Just imagine. Um, Maybe? I feel like... Here's the thing, though. I feel... Again, maybe it's just heel shit, but I feel like it has really become their brand. Like, I'm not saying that in a bad way. I'm not saying that's what makes the Bucks, but it really has become, like, a big part of the Bucks, and I think it's been a very phenomenal character change on their part, because even in New Japan, when they were heels, they still had the tassels, they still, it was basically the same thing, same gear, same look, they were just doing the heel shit, they would, you know, interview in matches, they would try to cheat, they, like, that's what they would do, they would just do what typical heels do, but I feel like it was a real, a real reinvention of the Young Bucks in the best way possible, so, could they be going back to what they once were? Or are they just going to find a way to reinvent themselves again? I don't know how they could, but I wouldn't be surprised if they figured it out that they young bucks. But who knows? Maybe? Like, question mark, question mark? Or, like, like again, that's a very good thought. But for all we know, Matt just hurt his foot and he doesn't want to put it back on. Who knows? <laughs> like... Oh, yeah, absolutely. Maybe he so just maybe maybe wants to sh- overthinking. Yeah, maybe he just wants to show off his sock. Who knows? But that is a very good thought. I would not be upset at that. But, again... It could be a sign of symbolism. They are really good at that. They are little sneakies. Mm-hmm. They sneak around like that, which I love about the Bucks. But really good thought. Yeah. Um, who knows? Maybe I low-key miss Facebook's like 
2019 books. I miss them when they were on Facebook, dude. I it was honestly the reason why I was on Facebook. Now I'm on Facebook because of family, which is not a bad thing, but I don't go on Facebook for friends anymore. If I want to know, like, oh, what's the family up to? I just have like all my family members, like even distant relatives on Facebook. Like some of them just at request to like friend me. I'm like, okay. I'm like, what? But yeah, it was, I, I, I love that thought. We'll just have to wait and see. But, but then again, just a little side tangent from the re- pay-per-view recap. You still have, like, again, there's still Kenny, and I know people, he might, again, he might come back as a face because I'm pretty sure no matter if you like him or hate him, people are going to be excited that he's back. It's just one of those things. Like, people absolutely hated Seth Rollins in 2014, 2015 when he had the world, when he had the WWE Heavyweight Championship, but then he got injured, and then he was out for months, and then he came back. He attacked Roman Reigns. It was like, I guess, well, I guess he wasn't really a babyface because the fans really didn't like him. But when he came back, everyone was absolutely losing their minds, including me. As someone who absolutely hated Rollins because of what he did to Ambrose, I was like, yeah, I don't fuck with Rollins. But I was excited to see him back. So I wonder if it's something like that. Like, he might have no choice but to be a face because, you know, people might just be so happy that he's back. But I guess that's something you have to try to take into consideration also. Because I think the Bucks and Kenny are definitely going to go back to just being the OG elite. Just the three of them. No Adam Cole. Maybe Hangman, but I I don't know. Maybe. May- and again, maybe it might be what Hangman does with the Dark Order, where he's just friends with them. And he'll fuck, he'll fuck with them. No, he'll hang with them. Like, you know, you know how people say, I fucks with this person. That's what I meant. <laughs> but um, he'll, like, he'll hang with no, them. That's a cowboy shit. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, he'll, um, hashtag assless chaps gang. Um, he'll hang with them, but he won't really be a He's member. <laughs> yeah, have you seen, that's, that's all me and Vince talk about on our recaps. Um, our friend Vince, we do hashtag assless chaps because Hangman has his assless chaps. <laughs> but yeah, so he can hang with the elite, but maybe he won't be so much in the elite. And maybe at some point he'll join that, but I think for a while we might see the OG elite. So I think depending on how Kenny's going to come back, whether it's a face or a heel, I think that's where the Bucks will stand also. But again, who knows? We don't know. First of all, we just need Kenny to come back first. But back to the match. Back to the main event. Um, Okay. I don't like Jay, but I'll give credit and I'll throw flowers where they're due. And it was a really good match. Again, there was times where I thought Okada was going to win. I did not know who was going to win this match. And I didn't like that I didn't know. Because I really wanted Okada to win. I really wanted Okada versus Jay for the title. I know our friend Matt, uh, mine and Katie's friend Matt, we, he called me out saying, you would rather, you would want Hangman, you would want to see Hangman lose again. And I'm like, look, I would much rather see Hangman lose to Okada than to Jay, okay? Because, like, Jay kind of reminded Hangman on Dynamite that he's 2-0 and against Jay White. Like, I would fucking hate for him to be 3 and all. Like, fuck that shit. But it was a good match. I would give credit where credit's due. Um, they, Okada and Jay White are like, like, I hate, like, they're like, kind of like Tommaso Ciampa and Johnny Gargano. Like, they're like, they will always put on classics, no matter what pay-per-view it is, how old they are, how long the match is. Their matches will always be good. It will, they will be classics. And I think they're just two opponents that will never fail to amaze anybody. And that's coming from someone who doesn't like Jay White, okay? So, um, massive props to both. Yes, even Jay. Just not as many props to Jay as I'm going to give to Okada. But it was a good match. I will, give, I will give them that. So, with that being said, Daniel, how many stars would you give this match? Five. Five? Okay, yeah. I gave it five, too. Um, I was... I was actually going to give it 5.5, but then Okada lost. So I'm like, fuck that shit. I ain't giving J 5.5 stars for winning the match. Absolutely not. But I still give it five stars because, again, it was a really good match, and these two can put on a really good match together. Okay, I will give them credit where credit is due. I will. I will. Even J, as much as I don't want to. And even then, I've said it before, I cannot stand... J- I like I don't like Jay, but I definitely prefer him over Cody Rhodes. Okay, like I've talked about how much I don't like Cody Rhodes. I definitely prefer Jay over Cody Rhodes. If I had to be become- if I had to become a fan of either one of them, I would rather be a Jay White fan. Like I would much rather be a Jay White fan. Because here's the thing, Jay White isn't the big issue of what I have with him. 
It's his fans. And I've mentioned this before and I've explained why. And Daniel knows. Like, I honestly, I vent to Daniel mostly about it. But um, it's his fans that I have the biggest issue with. They're just so annoying and disingenuine. And sure enough, like, they probably, I, cause I kind of, I wasn't that upset when he lost. Like, honestly, I took the loss very well. I was very surprised that I took it so well that Jay won. But it's because I kind of thought about it. And it's like, look, it doesn't matter that Jay won because you really think these fans are going to go and watch Jay White, like, go back to Japan with the title and defend it. And, like, no, they're not going to watch him. They're just going to look up shit online to see what's going been going on with his reign. And then they're just going to share on Instagram whatever Jay and New Japan has shared about him being the champ. That's all they're going to do. It's no different from before he was the champ or after he's the champ. Like, it's no different. So I guess that's kind of why I took it so well. Because I'm like, you know what? These fans aren't going to be any more fans fans than they once were before he had the title. It's just the sad reality. But with Cody Rhodes, it's him that's the problem. I don't like him. His fans, I don't fucking care. Like, if you like him, cool. Cool beans. Like, I don't care. It's not, I have nothing against you. You're not annoying. You know, whatever. It's him I, and his delusion that AEW would not be him with, like, would not be what it is without him. That whole deluded mentality that he lives with and he spews to his fans that now they believe, like, that's what bothers me. But, yeah, I will, again, I will give much more credit to Jay than I ever will Cody Rhodes. Because, again, Jay's not the biggest problem to me, personally. It's just my opinion, so don't take it personally, okay? It's just my personal feelings and opinions, okay? They should not hurt your feelings, all right? But um, other than that, um, so that, we already said our, our star rating. So, yeah, I think Akata should have won, but that's okay. He didn't. And who knows what's going to happen now. But with that being said, we are now going to give, um, we're going to announce or say who, what we think is our match of the night and wrestler of the night. So Daniel, match of the night, who are you giving it or what match are you giving it to? I think you know who I'm going to give it to both ways. Oh my God. Yeah, whatever. Okay. Just say it so that people know. Match of the night, Okada J, and wrestler of the night, King Switch himself. Yeah, no, no. I was gonna, you know, add. I was gonna make like Vince McMahon and do my own list of banned words list, and that was gonna be the first word banned. Switchblade, J White. Those are the book of banned words. Okay, no. Um, breathe is now a banned word also. Uh, okay. Because I wanted it to be different, and I don't want to give Jay the freaking wrestler of the night, I'm going to give his match, match of the night. It was the main event. It was good. I actually enjoyed it. I was on the edge of my seat. I didn't know who was going to win. Didn't like that Jay won, but again, Okada was, you know, just because Jay won doesn't mean Okada had gets no credit for the match. You know, it takes two to tango. So both of them did a really good job. It was a really good match, really good main event. So I'll give them the match of the night but mostly for Okada. Um, J- Daniel, I almost called you Jay. Fuck. <laughs> Daniel, wrestler of the night. You kind of already said, but still, just re- re- reiterate for the people. I'll give it to both. Actually, you know, I'll give it to both Jay and Okada. All right. Okay, res- I'll give you that. Yeah. Um, okay. I thought you were going to actually pull a fast one and, like, say Toriyano, like you talked about their match being a six-star classic. But, um, no, okay, yeah, good choice on Okada's part. Jay, kind of questionable, but it's okay. It's your opinion. Um, so I also have two wrestlers, but they're from different matches, and it's actually not Okada. So first wrestler, I'm giving it to Osprey. Okay, look, I love Sonata, but – you know, as much as because I feel like three would just be too much. So Osprey did win, and I think he's totally slept on. And I feel bad for the guy, okay? The guy's gone through it, okay? Some way, like, I wouldn't be surprised if he loses this title some way. I wouldn't be surprised if the Tanahashi curse rubbed off from Sonata to, to Osprey. He's going to – I feel like he's probably going to lose it out of his control. I feel so bad for him. He's gone through it, okay? He's had his neck injured, and he had to relinquish the, the – the heavyweight championship 
he's been, you know, he's gotten COVID, I believe, twice. So he had to, you know, he got COVID right before Wrestle Kingdom, and then he got COVID, which he couldn't go compete for the United States title. And then there's that whole, I know it's a work, but the whole Osprey's been screwed where, you know, his foot was under the his foot was under the ropes when he got pinned, or he kicked his shoulder out at two and like, you know, before the three count, so he got screwed over. So Osprey finally got his justice. He finally got his title. So congrats to him. Um, Osprey is my first wrestler. Second, of course, the way Daniel's going on brand, I'm going on brand too. Hiroshi Tanahashi is going to Forbidden Door. He's going to main event Forbidden Door with John Moxley. Holy shit, I'm excited. That stand-up alone was enough to make me lose my damn mind. So Hiroshi Tanahashi and Will Ospreay, my two wrestlers of the night. Daniel, any final thoughts overall of this pay-per-view or what could come out of this pay-per-view? I think because the next event now is Forbidden Door. Yeah. I think Dynamite next week is going to be one of the best. <laughs> we are gonna... going to get so much shit. And I think this, I think... It's like, the go-home brother... show. It is literally the go-home show for Forbidden yeah. Door. It is going to be massive. I am so excited. Um, Yeah, it's just so good. Um, Little note I wanted to point out. I really wish Satoshi Kojima could be here to participate but he joined pro wrestling noah which you know not not mad at you know this is his choice he has every right to choose what he wants to do with his career yeah i believe he's challenging for a title so i'm like dude you know he's doing well obviously he's in title matches now but shit like you know he was at all out last year would have been cool to see him again at some point here in forbidden at forbidden door but alas it's not gonna happen um i don't know what's gonna happen with Jay and the Elite and Adam Cole at Hangman. It's, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Well, I think there's two things that are gonna happen. One, like I mentioned, we're just gonna get Jay White and Adam Cole versus um, Hangman and Okada, which I mean, I think will still be a good match, but come on now. Like, I really want it. I really, I really, really want Hangman and Okada. I don't care if it's for the title. Even Hangman doesn't care if it's for the title. So just give me that match, okay? And now, now that since there isn't any um there's no title on the line so it's not like oh hangman's gonna lose it like it's pretty 50 50 now like it's that would be such a fucking banger match and honestly i don't really get matches like t-shirts like wrestling shirts of matches but i might just have to get that one that it's just too good to pass up if it happens and then the other thing that might happen is we just get Undisputed Elite against Bullet Club. That's probably what we're going to get, especially if Jay is kind of already pissing off Adam Cole with, you know, not letting him challenge for the title. But Adam Cole, I mean, I don't know what you expected, bro. You trusted the devil, okay? You trusted the most untrustworthy person, okay? Have you not paid attention? He's your good friend. You clearly don't know your good friend well enough, okay? And he's obviously not a friend because he's not giving you fucking title matches, but... I digress. I digress. But Daniel, any other thoughts? Never trust the cutthroat. Yeah, literally. He will cut your throat. <laughs> Fuck Jay. <laughs> that's, that's a torn. Imagine if I forbidden door, he literally did that. And everyone was just like, what the fuck? I'm telling you. Look, I said this before. I think I said this on a recap show. Like, not a recap show. On a we- our weekly show with Katie. I said, look. Jay is a heel, and people like to say he's the best heel of all, which I disagree. I think currently it's MJF, but right now MJF's gone, you know, because, you know, he did that pipe bomb. But here's the thing. If you really, because, like, Jay does the typical heel shit. He, you know, he has outside interference, you know, courtesy of Gato. He, um, he... He, like, does shit, like, put his feet on the ropes. He, he's very sneaky, and he does all the malicious heel shit that every, every heel does. But, dude... I said this before. Look, he's the he's the Switchblade. His name is Switchblade J White. Okay, that is one of the coolest freaking names in wrestling. Okay, why don't you live up to that name? And look, since blading or doing gags, whatever you want to call it, is obviously a thing in wrestling. Here's what you do: let J have a prop Switchblade and start throwing that shit at his opponents, and then they can just you know you know, blade, the, the, his opponents can blade so it can be safe, but it can look like Jay 
threw a switchblade and cut his opponents in the freaking head. It, you know how much of a threat he would be? I honestly might consider liking the guy if he, served, if he threw a switchblade at someone. Like, dead ass. That would be fucking cool to see. He is the switchblade. He can't be trusted. He's an evil mastermind. Why not let him throw a goddamn switchblade at his opponents, okay? Imagine how fucking evil that would be. Like, dude, he's throwing knives now. Like, holy shit. He is a knife pervert. Just imagine that. Like, think about it. Think about it. Like, One of my favorite <laughs> pieces of fan art, Jay posted it on his Instagram, was um, it was a drawing of Jay about to hit the Blade Runner on Tana, but they drew it in a way where they, Jay had a knife in his hand and it was like he had just taken it out of his head. Like there was blood coming out of Tana's head and everything. Jeez. I'll send it to you. It was a really, really cool. Uh, no, and I'm just like, holy shit. But see, imagine he would honestly be the top heel if he started doing that. No, I don't think any other wrestler has thrown a fucking knife at their opponent, okay? Let him throw the switchblade. Let them do the bits. So it can look like, you know, they can start bleeding, but it can look like Jay, it was on Jay's part. Obviously, you cannot throw actual knives in the ring. I get that's dangerous. You can hit him in the eye. You can do something. But since it's so quick, you know, we can throw it so hard and so quick. As long as it hits them in the face, they can just cut themselves somewhere, you know? If that, I think that would really elevate Jay as a heel, okay? Like, just think about it. Like, look at his gear. Like, I'm looking at the stupid picture, and, like, he's got the freaking slash. Like, dude, imagine. Imagine. Like, just think about it. Like, I'm for Jay. I'm like, you know what? I'm pro Jay getting a knife, okay? Like, give him the knife. He's the knife pervert. He's the fucking switchblade, and he doesn't use a switchblade. Please. His finisher is called the Blade Runner. Why don't you run an actual blade through someone, okay? Come on now. Come on. Like, do it. Like, where's Jay? Does Jay have a suggestion box? I will actually be nice to him and send him a suggestion. Be like, dude, just throw a knife. I'll send you one if I have to. Just send it to him in the mail. Yeah, I'll send him in the mail. I'll be like, dude. I'll be like, there you go. I'll hand it to him. And then Gato can kind of like the way like Penelope Ford would throw the brass nuts at um, Kip Sabian or like push him in the ring. That's what, you know, that's what, you know, Gato can do. He can like push the switchblade, you know, and all, you know, Jake can get ready to throw it. Kind of the way it'll be the same effect as when Malachi Black sprays the blackness in people's eyes. Same effect, you know, it's sudden, it's quick, you know, it, it, it works, it's effective. So imagine, and just think about it. Like, I just think about it. That's all I got to say. Like, I've never been so invested in something about Jay White, except him getting a switchblade. Again, just to specify for everyone, it wouldn't be an actual knife. It would be a prop, okay, that wouldn't cut if you threw it at someone. It might hurt because, you know, it hits you on the head. You know, it's going to hurt a little bit because of the impact. But... Just the way, you know, to have him throw it at his opponent, it, it hits them and they could, you know, they can like over, you know, sell it, you know, oh my God, he just got a knife thrown at you. And while you're freaking out on the floor, you know, you can just do a little, a little, a little cut season. And then, so that way, when you, you know, pull your hands away, you're a bloody mess. And then, you know, Jay could, I don't know, just enjoy it. I don't know. I don't know how Jay would react after he throws. Maybe he could try to like discard the evidence, something, but again, Hashtag give Jay a knife. Hashtag give Switchblade a Switchblade. Something. We need, I think I need, I need. Hashtag, hashtag give Switchblade a Switchblade. That's yeah, cool. there, there you go. I'll, I'll even, you know what? I'll tell you what, Daniel. I'll even put that on my story when we're done recording. Just with no context. Just hashtag give Switchblade a Switchblade. And then I'll be like, you want to understand what that means? Like, go watch this. Actually, I'll do that. I'll, when the video's uploaded, I'll post a link and I'll just put hashtag give switchblade a switchblade and then I'll put like like you know click the link to see why there you go that's how you do it there's your, yeah there's our plug I'll send you the uh the post of the fan art thing that right. I'm talking all right well we kind of got off track a bit but that's okay um so Daniel just really quick tell the people where they could find you and if you have anything or that you do or whatever, anything you're up to. You can find me on Instagram at Unscripted Paradigm. I mainly do like photo edits and stuff of mainly wrestling, but other things as well. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And if you want to find me, 
because you know i'm so likable <laughs> you can find me at on instagram and on twitter but i'm mostly on instagram on twitter i usually just go on for the bucks bio hangman and kenny no other reason or if there's drama <laughs> but you can find me on instagram and on twitter at y2 garcia with an underscore if there's no underscore it's not me that mistake has been made um if you like this, you can check us out on YouTube at Sheely Showcase. We're going for that custom URL, so please subscribe. I think we're at 83 subscribers, and I think we need 100 to get that custom URL, so please subscribe. But if you want to find all other things Sheely Showcase, you can go to my good friend or the hostess with the most is Katie's Twitter at Katie Wrestling. 13 for the link tree for all things she Elite showcase where we do things like this show the new japan takeover we do our weekly she Elite showcase um podcast which we usually do thursdays at um 6 p.m eastern standard time we've been doing this new um earlier time but however as of depending on when this uploads this coming saturday is we're not going to do um a show thursday we're doing it Saturday because um, Katie is on vacation. She's enjoying herself as she deserves. So we're going to just postpone it to Saturday instead of Thursday. Um, with that being said, we also have other shows that Katie does, like Inside the Find Out, where she interviews podcasters or people in the wrestling community and in the crowd, which is a um, wrestling collab show that Katie also does. Big shout out to Justin from Heel Tactics. I'll leave his at right here. Um, he's the mastermind behind all the music for She Elite Showcase, which includes our recap show, Katie's two interview shows, Inside the Mind of and In the Crowd. And he does the music for this show. So if you like the music or the intro music for this show, you can check out Heel Tactics Justin to see what he has or what he could do. He's a, he's freaking badass. He's a genius. Um, also another thing, we have merch now. If you guys want to check out our merch, we have two shirts that we have a classic She Elite Showcase logo shirt, which I made. Very proud that I officially made a shirt logo, technically. Um, and we have a pro wrestling pro choice shirt out, which I believe you should invest in because all the proceeds um, for that shirt go to Planned Parenthood because we believe that women's vaginas should not be overrun by white old men. Just saying. So you can go check that out. Um, and I think that's it. I don't think I missed anything, but if not, you can, again, when in doubt, just go to the link tree in Katie's bio on Twitter at KatieRussell13. And I think that's all I got. So until then, we will see you for the Forbidden Door show. I'm so excited for that. I will have Daniel on and I am going to try my very best to get Brooke on, okay? You guys need to meet Brooke. She is awesome. She's a badass like not just new japan fan but a badass wrestling fan overall if you thought i love kenny you should see this girl she fucking loves kenny she loves kenny the way i love hangman so i cannot wait for you guys to finally meet her it's gonna be so cool to gang up on daniel over jay over liking jay so yeah we'll see you then but until then adios breeze with the switchblade no we're not